Hello, I'm Michael Agard and thank you very much for joining this little session today on writing call to action copy that converts. In this short video I've taken my experience from four years of testing button copy and distilled it into a simple optimization principle and a few easy steps that you can use to consistently write high impact button copy of your own. And throughout the video I've added a couple of case studies in order to illustrate how you can use the optimization principle in practice. Now, the first thing you have to understand about calls to action is that they represent the tipping point between bounce and conversion. When you ask someone to do something online, they have to go through your call to action in order to do it. And the final thing that they're going to interact with in that critical moment where they have to make up their minds is the button copy itself. So even though tweaking a bit of button copy represents a minor change on the page itself, it will have a major impact on the decision-making process of your potential customers. And that's why it's so important to get it just right. However, getting it just right very much depends on the individual case. And therefore, there is no global solution that will work every time. But what I have observed throughout all these tests that I've conducted is that the more value and relevance that you can convey via your call to action copy, the more conversions you'll get. And that's the optimization principle that I want you to understand today. Okay, so let's have a look at a few case studies in order to illustrate how you can use the principle in practice. This is an example from one of my clients. They have a B2B website where they rent out offices and they have thousands of different offices and when you find one that's interesting, you have to click a button in order to get more information sent via email. And what you're seeing here is the original button copy, the control version. It could be a lot worse, but there is one significant problem with this call to action, and that is that it doesn't convey any value. It focuses on what you have to do and not what you're going to get. The word order itself is negative because it suggests that you have to go through a process. And who knows, maybe you have to go through 10 steps in order to get the information you want. Git, on the other hand, is positive. It conveys value and emphasizes what you're going to get, not what you have to do. So, as you can see, it's a minor change that has a major impact on the messaging. And when I tested it out in real life, it also turned out to have a major impact on the potential customers. Treatment A generated a lift of 38.26% in conversions. And this call to action is located across thousands of pages on the website. So you can just imagine the accumulated impact of changing this one word. Okay, so this was an example of how to add value. And the main thing here is to focus on what your potential customers are going to get, not what they have to do. So let's have a look at how to add relevance. This is an example from another one of my clients. Uh, they are a chain of gyms here in Scandinavia. And the button here is taken from a PPC landing page where the goal is to get potential customers to click through to the checkout flow where they can choose uh, the gym and buy their membership. So this is the original button copy that I wrote. It already emphasizes value because it could have said buy membership, which is negative, but it says get membership, emphasizing what you're going to get. However, the problem here is that the button is generic. It's not specific to the decision at hand, and it could be used on pretty much any page that has to do with membership. Now, I was thinking of ways to make the button more relevant, and I found out via uh, customer surveys that one of the most important factors when you have to choose a gym membership is the actual location of the gym. So I came up with this variant, find gym and get membership. And when I tested it in real life, it turned out to generate a 68% lift in conversions. So making that button copy super relevant to the specific conversion scenario had a significant impact on the decision-making process of the potential customers. Okay, so that was an example of adding relevance. And the main thing here is to focus on what uh, uh, the motivation of the prospect is in the situation uh, where you're asking him or her to click the button. Okay, so what you can do now is you can go back and review your website or pretty much anywhere you, where you have a call to action, for example, an email, and look for places where the copy is either a blatant order, for example, submit or send, or where the copy doesn't convey any value and focuses on what, what the potential customers have to do instead of what they're getting. For example, buy now, or 
places where the copy is generic and not very relevant to the specific conversion scenario, for example, download. When you've located a call to action that you want to optimize, then ask yourself two questions. One, what is my prospect's motivation for clicking this button? And two, what is my prospect going to get when he or she clicks this button? The answers you come up with are going to be the basis for the new button copy. And of course, you'll have to refine it and tweak it and work with it a little bit, but this is a great way to get started. However, I do urge that you test your new button copy instead of just relying on gut instinct. Because, as mentioned, your button copy has major impact on conversions and you want to make certain that you're moving in the right direction and the only way to do that is to test it in real life. And on that note, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again someday soon. Bye bye now.